Um, my name is Paige Bowman. I'm a non-binary illustrator. Um, I currently live in so-called Vancouver, but I'm originally from uh, so-called Victoria or the Hosseinich um, Lekwagen territory. My work is mostly centered around animals, around the organic world, um, really focuses on visual metaphor with regards to like identity, um, mental health, um, and folklore, folklore imagery. Um, so like retelling of folklore and storytelling through a contemporary identity centric lens. Um, I use a lot of traditional medium. I use uh, mostly watercolor and gouache in my practice. I don't do a lot of planning in my work. Um, just like from the from the start, like it's it's really um, a lot of accidental mark making. So so using a medium that is doesn't have a lot of control from the get-go allows for a lot of that accidental mark making and and fun. And then on the flip side, like gouache is like a little bit more conservative, being a bit more opaque. And acrylic gouache in particular is the gouache I use. It's like a little bit more structured. <laughs> so that's like the maximum amount of, of control in any medium that I want to have. Lately, I've been getting more into digital with animation um, and motion graphics, but I also do a lot of that work including my traditional practice as well. So kind of hybridizing the two. It's not necessarily like digital is good for replicating the marks because I still feel like it'll never be as as good as the real thing. Again, going back to that like accidental mark making thing. So, so I'm never really trying to replicate it digitally. I'm more just using digital as a way to add more dimension, if that makes sense. I get, I get really bored easily. I get, I get tired of the same thing um, pretty quickly. So I'm really... I'm really curious. I'm like, I'm just interested in, in constantly pushing myself or at least trying new things. My work has changed dramatically, um, especially if you look at it from like a timeline of the last like five or six years. I was really locked into using monochrome palettes, like black and white. I was super terrified of color. And somewhere along the way, um, color became part of my practice, I think, once I started introducing paint more. And now it's funny because I look back on that period and I'm like, I can see parts of my practice that I'm still into, but I can see parts of it also that I'm just like, could not be further away from, or at least like less interested in. I really like using cheap and like not great brushes, like dollar store brushes or just like things that have been caked on. Obviously for certain circumstances, I do have my like nice brushes that I don't want anything bad to happen to. But um, a lot of the brushes I use just as my daily ones are are like, frayed and bristled and damaged and I feel like that allows for a lot of mark making that is again like out of control and and textural so anytime I feel like the start of an image or the the ground in which I'm working with is like a little bit too linear that's when I start employing materials that have a little bit more of that kind of ex eccentric kind of you know dynamic element to them and and that really like promotes a lot of um, textural building and kind of making strange lines that then I'll go in and like control those lines. It's like organized chaos in a little way, like starting with with a foundation of like, OK, this is going to go some direction or this is going to end up this way. Let's see how it goes. And then if I really like it, then I'll go in with the tools that are a bit more precise and like really highlight those or accentuate those or carry that throughout in a more like I guess if that's the like original organic strange texture, then I'll go in and do an artificial recreation of that texture to like build out the rest of the composition. I'm really, I'm a really big advocate for like anyone fostering creativity, no matter who you are or where you are in your life. I really want to like, I really want to open up the door to, or at least like help encourage people to have more play and like incorporate more creativity in their in their lives I have heard or like being witness to so much um like self-criticism especially with like the younger generation or the like new incoming generation I think it's like um a result of social media telling kids that unless they're making work that's perfect from start to finish they're not a good artist and yeah, it just sucks because I've like, I've seen kids talk about that or I've seen kids express that working with them in a creative environment where like the first few lines or the first few marks they make are not landing the way they want to. So they're like, forget it. Like, I don't want to do this. Like, I can't do it. And I'm like, but that's, 
that's the best part. Like you figuring it out or experimenting or playing is what it's all about. It's not about being hyper precise or technically proficient. It's about expressing yourself. So I guess in terms of like leaving an impact or like something to just like impart on the world, I would really want that to be it. In and around 2018, the summer 2018, I was mentoring under um, my friend and um, longtime art legend in Vancouver, Drew Young. I like previous to that had dropped out of Emily Carr. I was kind of going through an identity crisis. I was going through a bit of a like art identity crisis. Um, the, the weight of the world was feeling very intense to me. Um, and I was also feeling a little disillusioned in my practice. So I was kind of at this like crossroads artistically I was in a relationship at the start of the summer, but that fell through after about a month. So I had like a stable place to live and then I didn't. So many things compiled in that summer for me emotionally, spiritually, and also just practically based on the people I was surrounded by that um, my art just like, like phew, got so good. Um, personally, I think it did. <laughs> good in the sense that I felt aligned aligned more with my work than ever before and I think I've just been kind of coasting off that since then I vividly remember like I think the first morning after I left my ex's home and um I had slept on my friend's couch and I was just trying to figure out where to go from there essentially and I still had this mentorship job so I was still responsible to showing up and, and doing a, a large amount of work I um I bought a bunch of highlighters and I had this sketchbook that had some gray tone paper inside of it and the gray tone paper takes the neon tones and actually makes them look I feel like they look better they look almost creamier than they do on white um and I was playing with the highlighters um like using highlighter color as the base and then black lines on top and that I think really broke through my sense of color or my ideas or like rules around color at the time I feel like 2020 and 2021 were a bit of a lull for me creativity, creatively. And I think that makes sense given what was happening globally. <laughs> um, but my wheels are starting to kick up again after this year and I'm starting to feel more inspired and motivated. So, so next year, it's just hopefully more of that. I, I have ADHD. So ideas and, and, um, plans kind of like exist at various levels of distance from each other and sometimes they're closer and sometimes they're farther and sometimes they you know burst into flames and die out and sometimes they <laughs> they are born I don't know it's like it's all just like yeah that might be cool how do I get there I'm gonna ping pong off 10 different ways of getting there and maybe get there and or maybe those 10 different things might end up going in a different direction and that's cool too like you know um I try to be really in the present um I think that's like a really, a really good thing. It's nice to be stayed in the present, but it works against me um, sometimes. So you can't really, I can't really have all of, all of the planning skills. So I'll just take what I have currently, which is staying really in the now.